this will not happen. However, people still fear the potential consequences of GM foods. GM stands for genetically modified and it refers to certain organisms that have had genes changed. So scientists have discovered that you can isolate little chunks of DNA, little genes, that can actually be moved from one strand of DNA to another between species even, and sometimes between entirely different organisms to carry one specific trait from that organism to the other organism. Genetics is a new science. However, the concept goes back thousands of years, where people like the Mayans would selectively breed maize and other plants to get more favorable results. In 1994, the Flavor Saver tomato was developed and approved by the U.S. Department of Agriculture for mass production as the first GM food. The tomato was designed to stay fresh for much longer than the average tomato. With the beginning of GM foods, since it is a new science, there is great controversy in Europe. We interviewed Peter Alaus, a journalist as well as a former UK citizen about the GM food unrest in the UK. And to go back to, to, to Europe, I think there were some things happened in Europe that made people very, very sensitive about what's in our food. And um, um, perhaps the main one of those is BSE. So, you know, p people in the UK in particular, where it was most severe, were told, you know, this bad disease broke out in, in British cattle. Um, it's a horrible thing. It kind of rots their brains, essentially. But we were told, you know, that's safe. It's okay. It's not going to affect people. But then in 1996, we started seeing cases of a similar disease, never very many of them. That really caused a lot of distrust and, at, and a, around about the same time or shortly afterwards um, it became apparent that um, you know US companies were wanting to export genetically modified food to the, U, to the UK and to Europe and without it being separated out and labelled and people just reacted very badly to that. Many on the opposition fear GM food could have harmful effects on humans. However, the truth is the exact opposite. GM foods are being designed to have many good traits. One example is golden rice. Golden rice is a type of rice that has been modified to contain more vitamin A. This rice is being used on many developing countries, such as Africa and Southeast Asia, to reduce the rate of blindness caused by lack of vitamin A. Just like golden rice, you can do many things with GM foods. So there's several things you can do with wheat. You can make it resistant to drought so that it might have, it might be able to live in climates that are a little different than wheat is normally in. A certain amount of less rainfall or not watering at the same intervals of time. A genetic modification might make this not a problem for wheat. With less problems growing crops like wheat, Farmers could produce much more crops with less problem. With more food on the market, companies could get much more money. Because of this, GMOs have a financial benefit as well. The same principle could apply to all crops, reducing the price on food in general. GM food could also have a positive effect on the environment. If we make plants that are more pest resistant, we could reduce the amount of pesticides dumped on crops by farmers. Almost 1 billion pounds of pesticide are used in America every year. Not only does this cost the farmers massive amounts of money, but pesticides pollute water, the soil, the air, and eventually the people. By making pesticides nearly obsolete, we could eliminate thousands of dollars of pesticides we use as well as severely reducing the harmful effects on the environment. It is estimated that if we use pesticide-resistant GM foods, we could reduce soil erosion caused by pesticides by 70%, allowing plants to be grown much easier. GM foods could have countless potential uses, making crops grow faster and bigger with less hassle, and decreasing the cost for growing, therefore decreasing cost for the consumer. Everyone can benefit from GM foods. I think the more powerful uh, complaints against GMOs are the catastrophic ones that we can create rather than solve the world's hunger problem we can create famine or we can get some uncontrolled organisms that's going to just take over the planet like a kudzu weed 
but then the ethics is strong too. Genetics is a new science, and people are worried that life is just too complex to just change one thing without unexpected results. Well, what could go wrong with modifying organisms is that while you might make wheat drought resist resistant, we might find out down the road that the same gene in wheat might cause it to produce a carcinogenic compound. You might make a, a wheat that causes cancer, and it might take years to find out that, oh, we're actually developing this carcinogenic compound in the wheat that's also drought resistant. We don't know that. GM food is so new that scientists don't understand the long-term effects of it on humans, and they won't until we research it further. But human health is not the only fear. The concern about it is that, okay, if those pests are being exposed continuously to that pesticide in, in the plants, However, there is not enough substantial evidence to prove that pests can get this kind of resistance. There are many GM fears outside of environmental and health too. Many also think that the patenting could create a lot of obstacles for GM foods. The company that creates 80% of GMO crops for the U.S. has had problems with patenting. They patent their seeds, but this means that the crops belong to them no matter where they grow. If a seed were to blow away and grow elsewhere, it still belongs to Monsanto. If a farmer didn't have a license from Monsanto and the seeds grew on their farm, they could be sued, even if the farmer wasn't aware that the plant did not belong to them. The public had a big problem with this, so Monsanto made their crops infertile. Another reason people do not like GM foods is because genetic engineering seems wrong or unnatural. Ethics and religion play a large role in this argument, and the idea of making a crop infertile seems unnatural and wrong to some people. You know, you're eating something that has genes from mammals and it's supposed to be a plant. People often over-exaggerate this. Even though you are adding traits from animals, the plants only gain the traits you specifically add. There is a tomato where they added resistance from cold that came from a fish. This is not going to make the food part fish, only the added trait will take effect. If GM foods are to become more prominent, the companies will need to show this misconception for what it is, a misconception. GMOs have a lot of potential fears and benefits. At the heart of the anti-GMO side, all they have is that genetics aren't fully understood. Many people bash against GMOs with pictures of large monsters or parodies based on the word Frankenfood. Hopefully this video helped you understand that this is simply an opinion that is probably lacking factual evidence. If GMOs can be accepted and come out of the shadows, they could show great potential for the world. Thank you for watching.